Hey everyone, Ken here once again. Happy Halloween. We're here to remind you that you still have time to call in or text or email us your answer for the prompt, what was the first horror movie that scared you? Uh, Don't forget, we'll be compiling all of those and playing them on next week's episode. You can email us at overtalkingpod at gmail.com or call or text us at usacat1591. All of that info is in the show notes and we can't wait to hear from you. All right. Enjoy the show. All right, Danny, can we please have a one-word uh, spooky-themed prompt? Family. Oh. Is that spooky, not Fast and Furious? Uh, right, hey, depending, depending on who your family is. <laughs> yeah. Woman. <laughs> you had that too quick. It's on here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ooh, spooky family. Um, I mean, a lot of my relatives are ghosts, so that's pretty spooky. I guess uh, same. Yeah, yeah, like all my grandparents are ghouls. Um, they live up at the ghouls? cabin. Yeah, specifically ghouls. Uh, they're at the cabin. I've introduced them to friends of mine. Creepy. Hold on one second. Hey, welcome to the Over Talking Podcast with your hosts, Ken and CJ. Say hi, CJ. <laughs> This is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies as chosen by our guests, but we're wrapping up Spooky Month here, so happy Halloween, because we're going to be talking about Basket Case this week. Do you, you have, have the time, time to listen to, to me one? Yep. We're talking about the music video by the music Green Day. Video, Green Day's Basket Case. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on YouTube, probably. I just want to say that I think we're off to a great start. Anytime the guest puts his head into his hands and leans forward, <laughs> I love the energy. We're going to have a great one today, folks. We definitely are. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's just bring our guests on right away. What do you say? Please. This week, we have returning guest Danny. Welcome back. Hey. Hey. Oh, hey. Thank, thank you so much, because I, I, I always try my best to not talk through the, the start, but... Yeah, you guys make me crack up and want to to interject about everything. Please. That's why you're here. Yeah. Yes. What we've brought you here to do. Uh, I know you guys aren't participating, but I I am. Here is my shot of Jefferson's at sea whiskey. Hell yeah. Wow. This is is aged at sea. (laughs) How does that work? They just put the barrel on a boat and go, all right. Now, here's what's crazy it says, Voyage. Like Voyage 27, and it has a teeny tiny little pamphlet that tells you where it was sailed around. This <laughs> this one was uh, around the, the Caribbean, the Bahamas. Okay, uh, I can really can taste that. Yeah, I can. I can really <laughs> taste the flavor of various seamen that uh, yeah. I suppose handled uh, the the barrels. What we salty. did with this year's yeah. whiskey brand was we took it on a little ride. We put it in a barrel and put it on a boat, and it sailed around the world. It really gathered the essence of where it's been. It's well yeah. traveled, but yeah. you know it's actually pretty good. It had an uh, all—you can eat all buffet. Good. All uh, jokes aside, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It only retched overboard three times. <laughs> good, glad you liked it. I don't think I've ever heard of that brand. No, no it's so, all it's, I know um, is that's not that's not Jacko Blast. So. <laughs> that's right. It's, it's you know what? It's no Jacko Blast. Well, I have Shame. You, some someday. We'll you'll you guys have to come by. We'll watch some movies in my ridiculous basement and you can you can try some out sounds oh, yeah. great so j- quick hard segue uh because i don't know where else to fit this in but uh coming up next week we'll be talking about my experience at the music box of horrors Woo! Uh, like we did last year uh and of course i have already been and did it <laughs> uh, but uh we'll talk about how well i did next week but anyway, uh, I want to quickly run down the movies because I think Danny may actually know some of the random movies uh, that were shown. We'll see. Uh, I actually yeah. don't know what they're they're showing this year because uh, it's just a non-starter for me. 20, <laughs> 24 hours in seats that are uh, crippling to me. Yeah, yeah, uh, very doesn't sound fun. But if but if you do want to listen to what it might sound like if I did go to the music box of horrors, you can check out some episode of. The Double Murder Podcast, presented by BloodyDisgusting.com, which I'm told is the largest horror movie website in the world. Who tells you That's that? That's probably well, true. Well, the, 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 the people who own, who started it and ah. then scammed me into doing a podcast for them for free. No monetary compensation. Unlike ours. Getting yeah, paid heavily definitely for get this. paid right. a lot. Is that, 
Is it still sponsored by Blair Disgusting? Even though it well, hasn't I mean, been made in like two years? I uh, Hypothetically, yeah. I was just talking to those guys <laughs> about playing basketball sometime soon. So like, same thing. Yes, that's the same thing. You're still in there. Yeah, like we're, if we're nice. old man pick up basketball is the same. Most people yeah. started a podcast during the pandemic. You guys were like, well, now we're done. No, this is <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Totally yes. makes sense. Totally makes yeah. sense. No more. All right. I'm going to run down the movies that I definitely already saw. Uh, <laughs> and they're in no particular order because the schedule has definitely already been released. Okay, here we go. Uh, Masiste in Hell. Anyone? Nope. nope. Ghost Rider. Cool. Uh, Devil Times Five. <laughs> I... Imagine it's fun. the fifth Can, in the series, or now are you, I don't think so. Are you saying okay. Devil X Five, or are you saying mm-hmm. Devil Five Times? I or wish it, it was either of those, but it's literally the I word would love times. If it was Devil Double, 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 Double. <laughs> Devil Five, no, yeah, super no. boring. Uh, the Killing of Satan. Why'd you want to kill that guy? Apparently, he needed to be put down. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. We hail Satan. Don't kill him. Yeah, that's right. Flesh Eater. Flesh Eater. Anyone? No. Okay, here we go. Here's the movies that you will actually know. The next four are the only ones that I know. Uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. Of course. TJ? Mm, I'm, I've heard of them. <laughs> Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> God, yes. Uh, now, now I'm interested in going. Absolutely. Uh, Blade. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had had never seen Blade before. I was, yeah, I still remember uh, yeah. yeah. Oh Literally. boy, I can't wait till you watch the rest of them. They're, uh, they're I think they're legitimately really good. Yeah, okay. I know. I I've only heard good things. Uh Idle Hands. Nice. Done, yeah. done that. We've on covered an that on the podcast, yeah. Um okay, then some weird 38 minute long movie called Computer Hearts. I guarantee no one's heard of that. Mm-hmm. Uh The Night of the Hunter. Don't know. Blood for Dracula, which apparently is the follow-up to Flesh for Frankenstein. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's fun alone. And, and, um, then, and then Water for Werewolves. Yes. <laughs> um, the Oracle. I think I've no? heard of that okay. one. Okay, and then <laughs> and fi- ending it up with uh, Twilight Syndrome, colon, Dead Go Round. <sighs> Dead Go Round? <laughs> Yeah. So, wow. Okay. I thought Danny might know any of these, but <laughs> no. that is uh, okay. No, cool. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't put up with crap that well. <laughs> Why uh, are you on this show? And yet, yeah, really. <laughs> and yet you chose Basket Case, which yeah. we will talk about that and more coming up on the Over Talking Podcast. Ooh. What is the secret Dwayne is hiding in the basket? What's in the basket? Easter eggs? What's in the basket? My brother. What's in the basket? Open it, if you dare. Basket case. Ken, do you want to know the audience score of Devil Times 5? Oh, yeah. 32%. That's higher than most things that we watch on this show, so that's not bad. Fair. And we're back on the Overtalking Podcast room once again by returning guest Danny, and we're talking about Basket Case. Danny, yeah, yeah. we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for you to describe this movie for someone who's never heard or seen it, which is probably a lot of people. Yep. Ready, go. Uh, so imagine you're a young child, and your older cousins, who you think are really cool, say, like, hey, you should definitely watch this movie. Uh, And then you watch part of it, not even all of it. And for almost the rest of your life, you avoid watching it because you were kind of freaked out as a kid. That's what this movie is. Uh, You classic Siamese twin tale. You should definitely watch it. Hard disagree. (laughs) Wow. All right. So let's dive into that a little bit more. So again, the theme for this month is where we're asking all the guests, what's the first horror movie you remember that scared you? And of course you chose this. So that's an interesting backstory. Had had you literally not watched it again until now? That's pretty, that's true. Wow. I, um, man, it's so funny thinking about this now because I have these like flashes of memory. I was really young. 
when I watched this, uh, and I think I was still living in Louisville, and my older cousins down there, who are who are like like brothers and sisters to me, like had me had me watch it, watch it with them, and it, it like my memory of it is that it's a much more serious horror movie than than it is. <laughs> nope, <laughs> sure um, isn't. Right, it, but but it's it it all makes sense. Like as I was watching it, it made sense to me why I thought things were scarier than they were, and, and they're. Scary is not what I would call this movie. Uh, this movie, right? Like, yeah. But it, I had, I, man, I think this is such a great premise for a series of episodes. I'm so happy you asked me to be on this, and I'm so happy I remember this movie and, and like gave myself a reason to sit down and watch it end to end. Uh, just like the memories that came back, uh, wh- whether it was like watching the movie or just like my time living down there, um, and then just how like ridiculous, you know. You know, memory plays such funny tricks on you. How would I have the context as a child to know that this stuff is like humorous schlock? You know, right. You know, and, yeah. and it, it's just the innocence of being a kid, man. You don't know. Yeah. I did want to point that out that you, you say humorous, and IMDb does have this as a horror slash comedy. Yes. Yeah, I mean it is. Yeah. It, 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 is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, like you can, and you can tell that the performances are hammy, and they, and they and they know what they're doing. They, there's like I, I'm surprised they don't just like straight up wink straight in the camera sometimes. You know, like they they know what they've put together. They know that this is not going anywhere, but like they gave a shit. They 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 tried, and so it's become. You know, you say like you know m- many. Most people probably haven't seen it. Maybe that's true, but it's it's this like true cult classic, you know. Like from what I understand, it, it you know obviously it did nothing in the theaters, but once it was able to be released on VHS and made it to like the rental stores, it's just been like this constant fixture, you know, albeit yeah. like very low key in the background, you know. For sure, yeah. So I th- the way I watched this was uh, Danny. Are you familiar with Joe Bob Briggs? I am. Okay, he he covered this on one of his shows, um, and so I downloaded or I watched it normally and uh, <laughs> legally acquired, legally yes. acquired it. So just I, like I, I bought fun. that HD Blu-ray version of it that I that I watched on yeah, disc, absolutely physical disc yeah. that I own. Right. Same. Um, anyway, he had, he had some fun backstory, but he apparently was partially responsible for the unedited cut that we all now watch uh, being uh, widely available because apparently after it had initially left theaters, they trimmed it way down to be more of a comedy by removing all of the gore. Mm. And that's oh. what was being shown around. But before they had the drive-in premiere of it, uh, apparently Joe Bob Briggs, who for those who don't know is like a famous movie host is specifically along with drive-ins. Um, he yeah pushed for it to be uh, put back together and and now we can all thoroughly enjoy it right CJ yeah so en- enjoyed it so much <laughs> Do, CJ can you tell me some of the ways in which you enjoyed this movie gladly <laughs> uh, let me get my notes here <laughs> oh it's just a blank uh, sheet of paper wow huh? <laughs> <laughs> flip through all these. Um, <laughs> There's a time at the very early on where the doctor is knows some. They're at the doctor's office that they've hunt, hunted down, and they're gonna kill him. And he's kind of like freaked out. He hears noises in his office, and so he runs into a room and pushes a desk up against the door to like prevent somebody from opening the door. Except that the door swings the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> as that as that was happening, I was thinking to myself, what what's even the purpose of this anyway? Is it Oh, I'm gonna put so much heavy stuff that I can't like somebody can't open this. And it's like, man, a good shove will make anything slide. Like yeah. you have to put so yeah. much in. And that's when I noticed it's not even the right way. Yeah. No. That's not you know how you pushed thing. the desk over to the door? It seems like somebody else could probably just push it away <laughs> right, from the right. door. Yeah. Right, right. Uh the other uh, thing I had was, oh man, the breakfast of champions, a good old packet of hot dogs. Mmm. <laughs> I Yum. mean, you joke. Belial consumes an entire <laughs> unopened packet of hot dogs. I'm pretty no, sure no, 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 he no. is he, not he watching this figure at this he point. Opened them. I, I enjoyed watching the 
individual frankfurters God. fall into oh, sorry, his basket. Yeah. Like I meant so that much rain. Were fresh. Oh yeah, they were not cooked. Yeah. Have have we have we like actually gone through it like an actual synopsis of what this movie is? Like so I don't think so. No. It's... Yeah, sorry. You know I never do. <laughs> just really just really quick to hit the main points. There's a guy, what's the main character's name? Dwayne. Belial? No, oh, Dwayne. Well, that's, I guess that's yeah, Bel- Belial could be the main character, I suppose. <laughs> um Dwayne is the human uh who Dwayne is carrying around his Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, they're both both humans. They're both real. This is a story of, of, uh, (laughs) you know, like a guy fighting against the ableist culture of early 1980s New York. Yeah. He's carrying around his severed Siamese twin brother in a literal wicker basket with a lock on it. Uh, All around New York, uh, specifically trying to kill off the doctor's who separated them. That's literally it. Yep. And fun yeah. and, and hilarity ensues. That's <laughs> horror. No, that's it. it does Horror it. ensues. Hard, hard horror and bad blood being sprayed on the walls. Yeah. Yeah. That was another thing I loved about this wicker basket was that they had a lock on it. Where we see in the movie theater, somebody easily just kicks it off because, yeah, just kicks it it's right wicker. It. <laughs> yeah. You can't like screw on a lock to wicker. No. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he could bust out of that even if he wanted to. Yeah, but that was the thing, because it's not about people not getting in. This is what you're missing. This it's is about this him is some of this out. is some of the the deep filmmaking and storytelling no. chops nope. that were on display in this movie. Nope. It's not about you're right. <laughs> it's not about keeping the public out. It's about keeping Belial in. Wow. <laughs> And if we really dive down that rabbit hole of intended <laughs> yeah, uh, thought let's. process, by no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it's pretty bad. Big old stinker of a movie. All right. Well, can can we all agree that Belial, who is this literal blob of rubber, uh, mm-hmm. is his face when you see his teeth is actually kind of terrifying. Does, does anyone yeah. else agree with that? Okay. And, and the I, noise he makes is it's yeah, the noise for yeah. me, man. <laughs> This is part of the like remembering like the memories and like kind of being brought back to that place and then like kind of thinking about oh like why would a god I don't know 6 year old <laughs> like why would a, why would a 6 year old oh right because a 6 year old this is fucking frightening because that thing kind of looks human but it's not but that <laughs> fucking noise to this day that that noise just like sends shivers up my spine, and partly because I was watching it last night, uh, and it wasn't like late, but like Steph was in bed, and I had the I had the volume down low, but that noise is so loud and it's yeah. so distorted, and it just hits every frequency as hard as it can. It's like it's like first I'm like fumbling for the remote, be like turn this shit the down, what the <laughs> fuck. And then I'm like, oh god! Like, why is this still so like grating and, and yeah. like sh- sh- making me feel uncomfortable? I don't think these people are geniuses by any stretch of the imagination, but I think they hey, stumbled. Up- <laughs> I think they stumbled upon something that's like legitimately creepy. It, it's yeah, it, it's unsettling that noise. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty no awful. Kidding. And by the third time, it's also hilarious. <laughs> it's it's also well, just yeah. like some like wailing rage mockery of anything when he they're in the hotel room he he throws a full-on like child's tantrum and starts throwing oh. things around and that's when it was kind <laughs> of funny it was like it's oh, hilarious yeah like, what and they was switch to doing? the, the papers, stop motion i'll throw them everywhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> these papers we worked super hard to get to find and murder people oh, i'm just gonna toss them everywhere yeah, yeah. his impulse control is not great I I did that was when I laughed was the stop motion scene of him throwing a tantrum in the hotel room. <laughs> that was some good old fashioned stuff. The stop, the stop motion, motion is real real great. Yeah. Um my my favorite moment is the part where he hides in the toilet from the cops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That yeah. that is got to be the best part. Little, little little game of 
hide and seek he plays with Dwayne, who's like searching for him, like knowing his uh-huh. favorite haunts. Like, oh, are you are you out the window? Are you hang are you hanging from the scaffolding of the building? Or are you nope, I'm in I'm in the toilet. I'm in the toilet. Little little hand yeah. little, little hand raises hey. out of it. Hang and now does Belial need to hold his breath while in the toilet? What do we think? <laughs> I think Belial well, I mean, is like I don't a, want to pull on that string too much. <laughs> the anatomy of Belial, real quick. I think. I think he's yeah. just able to hold his breath really long. Like you know how like yeah, uh, let's go with that. I like that. Uh, okay. Like so otters hold his breath. or seals and stuff. They they sleep underwater, right? Because they can mm-hmm. hold their breath for like an hour at a time. I think it's a lot. Well, he's probably used to holding his breath being under uh, the main character's armpit for most of his life. So, <laughs> hey, true. I think, I think that's... Uh, probably built up his chops there a little bit. You joke, but that just makes logical sense. Just another yeah. example of just expert level storytelling. Right. Well thought out storytelling. No. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. See that. See, I mean, far far be it for me to ever convince CJ that a movie is good. I mean, you still probably still haven't seen Goonies or some shit. I love the Goonies. <laughs> what's I hate what's the Goonies? This is this is the time. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> Damn, get him! I didn't watch. You, I didn't watch the Goonies, the Goonies until much later in life, so I didn't have the nostalgia. And the I think the nostalgia is the only thing that keeps that movie going. It's fun. Just tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. You're right. That's a dude. Rocky Road. Come on, man. It's it's a fun. Anyways, movie. here here's here's a question that and and I posed this pre taping, which caused us to tape immediately, and and I just maybe this will help me level set with you, CJ, like where the where in the world you're coming from. Mm-hmm. We we you're you're doing this whole month of episodes about the first movies that like really scared your guests. What are your movies? that really scared you guys first. And, and, and CJ, I want to let this simmer in your brain for a while. And so you can just have to sit in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ken, what's the, what's the first movie that like really scared you? So I'm trying to remember, I can't, I have an awful memory. So the first thing that's going to come to mind is something I watched in high school called the strangers. <laughs> uh, and I think that movie, I remember driving back home from the theater with a friend and literally checking the back seat like 20 times on the drive home just because I, I mean, that has nothing to do with the movie, but like I was just that afraid. You were just and freaked out. You're freaked that out. Things are just there that I'm not aware of and I need to be looking for it in the corners. Now, and, had you, yeah. had you watched like scary movies, horror movies prior to that? I'm sure I, yeah, I definitely had. I had seen Blair Witch before that. Um, that one oh, definitely Blair scared me as me. well. Blair, Blair we, Witch, I couldn't, I didn't go to yeah. sleep until the sun came up, and I, you know, I knew it was fake, but but it got me enough. Yeah, that that got uh, Carissa, who recorded the episode pre- in, earlier in this month, uh, that oh. also uh, covered that. But that I've listened uh, to because yes, absolutely, <laughs> it already came out. Uh huh. I don't, I don't remember specifically being scared by that, um, but I definitely remember the strangers scaring the fuck out of me, specifically because like the whole movie. It, it's just people in a house, but there's people who have broken in and they're not even aware of it. And yeah. they just show up in the background of scenes, like out of focus. And you're like, holy shit, turn around. They're right there. I don't know. It, it's yeah. so good. And it still holds up today. And yeah, that's, that's. I, I, I like it. I like it because it's, I mean, there's some jump scares in that movie for sure. But there's this creepiness that I think everyone can understand everyone's felt that before it taps into mm-hmm. this normal thing dude so i, I moved in this new house man i it's, there are times i am creeped out i am no longer in the safety of the eighth floor of, of some mm-hmm. building I'm, I'm closer to the ground level and uh it's bigger than any home i've ever lived in and so like <laughs> shit gets dark and weird not I'm, I'm not sure i'm about it all the time and a lot it's, of places it, someone could hide, right? It, it, dude, that's that stranger's thing, man. Yeah. C, CJ, what's what's it for you? I have no idea what the movie is, but I have a vivid memory Ooh. of being so oh, scared I, are, from are a you movie. In on this? We're doing. We're trying to figure this out, aren't we? Yeah, I want, definitely want to figure this out. All right. <laughs> I I can't begin to describe it, so I, I it's not going to be my. I have a, a backup <sighs> answer though. This was like in fifth grade. I remember seeing they showed us a movie that involved people dying off and i was just like what do you mean they showed you like are you talking about in school in class yeah (laughs) so was this a film script 
I people die. I don't are, know. Is this like, and then there were none, or something like that, or maybe like, yes. Okay. Oh, Wait, okay. Are you I looking it, it up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I I think that actually might be right. What, huh. What's yes? Right. That's it. I think <laughs> I think you nailed it. Wow. <laughs> Wait. Right, it. What's what's and then there were none. Is this like Agatha it's a, Christie? It's an Agatha Christie adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, ten little Indians. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought it was at first. I, I was Googling that, <laughs> but it was in black and white, so it was, and then there were none. Okay. Shit, dude. Well, at least wow. your first is a fucking classic, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's great. What Ken, was your backup, uh, though? That makes me so happy that you nailed it on the first guess, because <laughs> that's been haunting me for decades, and I've had no oh, idea sweet. Dude, that's amazing. what this good, was. Good, good work. Ken, you, you get a cool. plus one to the trivia section. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, wow, I get points. That you don't participate in. <laughs> Yes. My my <laughs> yeah, backup, backup answer though was um that I remember like one of the first years that I stopped trick or treating as a kid, so probably like middle school sometime I'm guessing, when then I like stayed home watching TV while people were coming to our house trick or treating and seeing Halloween for the first time and rem- oh, remember being boy. super scared of that. Yeah. That was that's okay. what I think of it as like my first like horror movie dude mission failed successfully yeah <laughs> so That's so then to, to, to kind of add on to this conversation i'm, I'm curious to like like ken i know you're a big fan of horror movies cj if i recall you are not correct uh, as you are not a fan of any movies because you've never <laughs> seen really any of them uh-huh but i i'm curious what you might think like why like cj what, if anything, can you come up with? Like, why did those experiences turn you off? Which is probably easier to answer versus, <laughs> Ken, why did those experiences make you want to come back and, and like, keep watching this stuff? CJ, you go first. I hate jump scares. I hate that feeling. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. It's, yeah, I think so, it's, it's so cheap, you let but I don't the, like it. The... What, what do I want to call it? The instincts built into all living creatures. Yeah. To avoid like danger. Uh huh. You listen to those. Yeah. That's that story checks out. That makes sense. <laughs> That's <laughs> At least why one it's an easier answer, right? Like, yeah. It, I, I, it always, I've always kind of like wondered, like, not wondered. I think there's a fun conversation of like why people like horror movies. Why, why at times are some of the like most popular movies that, that come out or at least consistently. But Ken, mm-hmm. what's what's your excuse? All right. So, I mean, this isn't the first time I've been asked this. Uh, it's the same reason that people jump out of airplanes and go skydiving. It's it's a thrill. It's it's mm-hmm. a literal thrill you get from being scared. And that's just how it, it associates in my mind at this point. I wasn't always a big fan of horror movies. It wasn't until college when I finally like started diving in. And uh, well, I was alone a lot because I finally had... <laughs> Like my own room, right? I, I could oh, watch this, movies this con- as listen, this often as I want. Going a place I didn't intend. <laughs> Took a turn. It was. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I could cry alone in the darkness. <laughs> and it would be great. Yeah. Um. But but even beyond that, I I think horror movies ha- really touch on a lot of subjects that other movies like can't even get to creatively. Like there's so many different ways a horror movie can go that you wouldn't expect or that can be new and, and really surprise you. And that's what I really can, what, what drives me to continue watching horror movies going forward that and, and quote unquote genre movies, right? Um, yeah. Sci-fi, other, other things like that. Um, that's, that's what really attracts me to it. Yeah. I think that's a lot of it for me too. Like the, I think the initial thing that kept me coming back to horror movies is like, I just like monsters like I like my favorite horror movies are like monster horror movies. And mm. at the same time, like, you know, like I really, I, I'm like a low key big fan of Godzilla. Like I'm a, uh, you, you know, I, like anything that's like monster creature related just kind of ties into the same like Saturday morning cartoon bullshit that, that most of us grew up on. So, so I like that, that, that I think is the first thing. And then as I got older and watched more things um, and, and stuff like yeah then it became that other thing more of like this ability to explore uncomfortable realities in in safe ways right because you know it's a movie Mm -hmm. this isn't a there's plenty of horrific documentaries out there and 
man, that a whole other conversation about can be had about like serial killers and the, and the rise of like true crime stuff that here's an idea. Uh, February Valentine's month, women talking about their favorite true crime media. <laughs> I think there's something Sounds there. Good, there's something there and I don't understand it exactly. Uh, all right. Or at all, but like at times it feels like women are the biggest fans of this sort of shit, which oh, seems like true. You're, you're also yeah. most likely to be the victims. So what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Right. Anyways, I digress. Yeah. Just like being able to, to explore like uh, these un- un- uncomfortable things. And, you know, CJ, you bring up Halloween. Halloween's a perfect example. It is, it is this like monster movie, this slasher, this slow burn, this anxiety. Um, it has elements of like the strangers in it a little bit. This like, you know, somebody invading the idyllic setting of the, these like suburban homes. I think that's what does it for me is specifically the home invasion part. I yeah, think that but really but it's it, it, it's it's this whole thing. John Carpenter says it. The the movie is about the fact that bad things exist everywhere. And at that point in time, you know, there was this perception that, you know, Hey, the suburbs are safe. You know, it, it was like at the end of white flight, all the middle-class folks had gotten out of cities and lived in suburbs. It's like, yeah, man, shit's still pretty fucked up though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also Michael Myers is just a, a really fucking good bad guy. You, yeah. you can do a lot with a dude who doesn't talk and just murders. Yeah. I think that's what makes it work even better than your typical monster. He's slow moving. That's even creepier. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah, like him, him, and like a Jason Voorhees. Like mm-hmm. they're they're gonna get you. Right. They don't need to run. They will get you. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. But yeah, just getting back to basket case for a minute, and just like just like the fun of like reliving all this stuff. But like one of the things. C- CJ, I think you're on record. Like you did not like this movie. Right? Surprise, surprise. No. Um, <laughs> I, I, but I, I, I'm, I'm. I'd be curious to know, like, what you, what if any horror movies you've seen lately that you liked. Um, just because I'm always curious, trying to figure out your tastes. But one of the things, the, the things I like about this movie are, yeah, like everyone's really, everyone involved in this movie is really trying. Like they, they know what their budget is. They know what Mm -hmm. is going to come out, but nobody just like phoned it in. Like, yeah, they're hammy actors. And it was at a time where like you could be that almost like theatrical, like over traumatic, like I I would call it Shakespearean, but that's just because I don't know any better. Like whatever, like the, 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 the first guy who's, who's trying to avoid getting murdered by, he doesn't even know what he just (laughs) thinks there's something in the house and he's scared to death. That was mm-hmm. another thing I had written down in the first, yeah, like two minutes of the movie. The guy is scared running around and like only the lights turning off goes, oh, God, no, no. It's like, right. Dude, the lights just went out. I'd like calm down. Right, right. And, and tell yeah, me you a... wouldn't react exactly the same if that started <laughs> happening to you. Oh, God. <laughs> no! Like if it's real, like you realize something actually is happening right now. I would yeah, probably as, freak as the fuck out kid, too. Yeah. As a kid, if the lights, if like the power went out, I was exactly that. Oh God, what's happening? No, oh, <laughs> well, I, oh. I mean, I don't know which came first in this chicken or the egg here, but like, yeah, <laughs> right. No, but like everybody, everybody really like kind of tries the best they can with what they ha- they they made a competent, a relatively competent movie with the means at their disposal. It just wasn't that that good. There's just nothing like there's nothing I find like offensive about it. I thought the the gore makeup was pretty good, mm-hmm. uh, and then especially when I think about like it was made in like the early '80s or some shit, like probably even better. So there, so there's all that. Like, so hold on, n- nothing you found offensive about it? <laughs> Not even the uh, the the final uh, kill <laughs> thing that happens. Somebody's asleep. Uh, Somebody's asleep, a, and then sexual act. murdered, and then some sexual act happens on that person. I mean, no. <laughs> I I know that it's not real. Yeah, <laughs> so, like as I did, but I, that that's not what I meant by by offensive. I mean, like offensively bad, right? Like like okay. just like like those movies that just clearly don't care enough, and it's like you know, there's 
you know, discontinuity and this and that and the other. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that this is like a perfect film by any stretch of the imagination, but like that that's what I mean. Like they, they bothered to make this make sense. The other right. thing that I like a ton about this and about any movie that's kind of set like this, I, I, I'm so intrigued by the uh, uh, 70s and 80s New York. You know, oh, it's, yeah. I can't imagine. It, it's like the closest that we'll ever get to like, I don't know, the 1920s, 1930s, where you like, like it's like tenement housing and, and flop houses and shit is like fucking dirty and gross. Like Times Square is a fucking nightmare, mm-hmm. you know? And, and and yet this was like accepted and this is like part of America. That There's just something about it that I can't totally wrap my head around that's just so different from how we live today that's really just intriguing to me. So the fact that like the whole thing took place in like a short term hoteling situation and uh, you know, there's all these scenes uh, in Times Square and kind of like focusing on that grittiness. I, I just really like that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that. I mean, I, I, a lot of the seventies and eighties horror, especially like B movie horror, anything that, yeah, touches on New York city around that time is, is kind of intriguing. Um, yeah, nobody's, I know nobody's this... going out to Long Island. Like it's all like no. it's all like CD Times Square shit, right? I know this director specifically, Frank Hedden Hedden Lauder, something like that. Um, a lot of his movies take place uh, in and around New York in, around that time frame. Um, which I've surprisingly seen three of his movies now, which is uh, wild. But we'll get into that in trivia. Uh, but by the way, do you guys want to play some trivia? Segway. CJ, are you up for it? Yeah, I'm up for it. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Now, I think this, I think, should be a good one because I stayed away from this movie for so long. I just mm-hmm. explained, like, just because there was this thing in the back of my head that's like, well, I've seen it and it scared me. I don't need to watch it again. <laughs> Self defense mechanism? I, I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, for new listeners, this is the part of the show where we pit our guests and CJ head to head to see who knows the most about what we watched. Danny, CJ, are you two ready? Ready. Yeah. All right. First question. Uh, just closest. What was the budget for this movie? Oh, God. I'm terrible at these questions. Uh, I mean, they had to make B- Belial and all that gore. <laughs> uh, $30,000. Okay. That's a pretty good guess. Because that's $30,000. Yeah, then $1980s, money. Which yeah. is like... Mm-hmm. Twenty million today? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, I'm gonna say like fifty grand, fifty thousand dollars. CJ, you were closer. You were actually really close. It was thirty five thousand dollars. Dang, nice dude. Yeah, you're getting better at that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't feel like it, but yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. Uh, next question: Why was the actress who plays Sharon, who eventually goes on some dates with with the main character, and spoiler alert, dies and gets uh, well, uh, why was she wearing a wig, like a very obvious wig in this movie? Well, so I know the answer to this. Oh, right. Because <laughs> you watched what I watched. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I watched the Joe Bob Briggs version. I generally was skipping through anything he had to say, except for this fun fact. All right. Well, this won't count. Well, do, you, do you just want to say the answer? I have no idea. So I just want to know what the yeah. answer is. She shaved her head because she was in a punk band called the Tattooed Vegetables. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Isn't that great? <laughs> beautiful. And apparently the director was pretty upset because she had a full head of hair beforehand and then showed up on set and was like, oh, by the way, I shaved my head. So that's why it's a super obviously fake blonde wig. Yeah. That's why I like watching uh, the Joe Bob Riggs ones. Like, I don't love his character just because i don't know it's a the whole southern thing is that but uh he is extremely knowledgeable and uh it's just kind of fun breaking up the movie that way especially for these you know more flocky like yeah 80s stuff um, yeah speaking of that's how uh both meg and i have gotten exposed to more of frank Hen and lotters but i really looked that up uh movies and pre before even watching this we were watching another one of his movies where Dwayne Bradley uh, appears with a wicker basket in it, making a cameo. Wow. In what other film 
does Dwayne and the basket make a cameo? Or come Good on, luck. I'm supposed to oh, name boy. a movie? Can I have no you... idea this guy made other movies. All right, so I'm going to give you two names, and you can pick one, all right? Okay. Was it Brain Damage, or okay. was it Frankenhooker? Jesus. <laughs> what I was hoping is that um, one of them wouldn't be the name of a horror movie. And it'd be like, aha, <laughs> I know the names of horror movies. I got you there. But now you really fucked me. I'm so, going to go with the latter. Frank and Hooker. Frank and Hooker. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, just to, just to try to get a point on you, I'm going to say brain damage. But I'm like almost positive he didn't make that. He did make that. He did? So, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. you, Screw you, dummy. He you did. You got the point. And that's, that's it. Yeah. He, uh, br- brain damage is like pretty similar where there's a dude and there's this rubber creature that uh, is like a parasite and attaches to the back of his neck and whispers weird things in his ear. Uh, mm. Pretty. It's, it's like a it's like so, a reverse basket case, right? Yeah. Instead of, instead of separating them, you put you put the creature on you. Yeah, I guess so. All right, so all tied up. But how many sequels did Basket Case spawn? I can't believe this, but two. Okay. I, I also know that it is two. <laughs> okay, that is correct. Yeah, I also can't believe that. Uh, apparently, the uh, and CJ probably knows this from from watching Joe Bob, but apparently, the actor who played Dwayne Bradley is currently working on writing a fourth sc- no. uh, sequel. Oh. God bless him. I'm sure can't can't be good but no. how long do you think he's been working on this masterpiece yeah i'm sure years <laughs> this magnum opus uh-huh god all right well that's it so it's all tied up so mm-hmm. time for the tiebreaker what is the rotten tomatoes tomato meter score in percentage just closest and i realize that whoever goes first actually still has kind of a uh, disadvantage so if you want to i don't know text me your answer <laughs> To make it even, okay, all right, uh, all right, all right. I see. Bringing bringing technology into this shit. Huh? Yeah, I'm trying. Like, I'm thinking maybe most critics are maybe more thinking Danny's line of thought. Like, if you kind of go into it knowing it shouldn't be taken seriously, but I still think it's pretty bad. Let's do that. All right, I have both answers. Danny, you answered forty percent. And CJ, you answered 56%. <laughs> it's a very random number. Um, but CJ, you are closer. Yeah. So that means you're the winner. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's hold on answer? to your butts. Hold on to your butts. It's 76%. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what? What, what, I should have, what I should have taken into account is like the reviewers are reviewing it decades afterwards and the only people who are yeah. going to bother to review it are the people who are mm-hmm. primed to like it already so, invested cj good on you yeah that's probably it all right what well, just for fun what do you think the audience uh percentage was i don't know 65 i would like yeah, yeah like 70 right. 80 okay 54 oh okay less that's yeah all right yeah. so it's probably in line with my guess with, yeah right yeah well, that was fun. Well, I'm curious. Uh, what what did, what would we all rate this? So it's time for ratings. 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 Danny, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate Basket Case for you? Uh, I'm going to put it at... I'll give it a 6. I'd give it a 6. Just like it's it's definitely worth watching. It's definitely funny. <laughs> if, if only for that noise alone. Just so you can <laughs> experience that shrill, frightening whatever it is. But it's also not something that like requires repeat watching. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, I, I I've gone probably thirty plus years since since I've seen this movie. I could probably go another thirty years without seeing it. It's like, yeah, that that's where it is. Okay, CJ. Yeah. Okay. So let's review the scale here. Um, so we're starting out with a one because it is a movie. I got a point there. Okay. <laughs> oh, moving up. Wow. Uh, <laughs> n- never good when you start using this kind of scale. <laughs> uh, yeah, really you did not enjoy this. <laughs> it was pretty weird and uh, not that good. 
Uh, I did. I, I agreed, Danny, that the, the gore aspects were impressive given like the time and budget of this. Enjoyed that a bit. Awful, awful noise Bill Isle made. Um, yeah, maybe like I think I'm gonna go with like a three. <laughs> Wait, does Oof. the noise does does the noise add or take away? I'll never tell. <laughs> I, I think it takes away for <laughs> you and somehow adds for me. Yeah. Dang. Ken. Okay. For me, honestly, th- these are the kind of movies that Meg and I watched on Friday nights uh, as kind of a tradition. Um, we we like again. Not to, I keep talking about Joe Bob, but we, that's the thing we would throw on. It's just to get through a uh, schlocky horror movie, but you get a bunch of additional info. Um, and these are the his, kind of movies his you watch. Stick is like his stick is like Mystery Science Theater three thousand, but for horror movies, right? No, so he he doesn't talk during the movie. He plays the movie, but then like at like the commercial break, he'll break, that's, yeah, and then they yeah, show yeah, him yeah. and he talks about the movie a little bit. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's used to, fun. Used to I mean, be wraparounds on cable. Friday night activity. Yeah. yeah. So uh, th- this is, I mean, definitely one of those movies. And it's, yeah, not the best movie for sure, but it's still fun. And honestly, Belial scared me. So that's points for that, I think. I think I'm going to be in the handholding club with Danny. I think six is, is a that's fair right. score. Here, I'll, I'll be gentle. My hands are supple. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I think it's it's not great. It's not my favorite movie. I would watch it again, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but I never will. <laughs> CJ, yeah. what's what's your favorite horror movie? Do you have a favorite horror movie? Good question. I think at, at, like even though Halloween, I credit as sort of like the first horror movie that scared me. Revisiting that, I did really enjoy it. So you didn't um, know also, that Halloween is my favorite horror movie as well. Oh, wow. wow. Nice. So you and I are also in a hand holding club. Yeah. <laughs> also, last week, wink, we did A Nightmare on Elm Street, and I, I, I enjoyed that. That was kind of a fun one. I, I yeah, sort of did. knew not right to here. take it. Yeah. I, and I think that's what I need for these types, too, is to know what mindset to go into these with. Where in Nightmare on Elm Street, I kind of was like, yeah, I kind of, I know about the shtick of it. I'm not going to take it seriously. I don't think there's any like amazing acting in this that I should be paying attention to. There's not. That was pretty bad. Uh, Johnny Depp I think looking you at would, you. I think you would have more favorites okay. if you if you sat down and watched like the classics that you're missing, right? Because you had never yeah. seen Nightmare on Elm Street, but now you kind of liked it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Have you ever seen the original Friday 13th? I have to assume so at this point, but maybe not. You would, I think you would know. I I think, I think you'd know if you did. Like ripping through, ripping through like a Friday the 13th marathon on, I don't know, let's say a Friday the 13th is, is like a, a pretty fun thing to do. And it's, yeah, I, I would encourage you to check it out sometime. Okay. Yeah, definitely. If only to cover that base. Yeah. Well, Danny, thank you for joining us. This was uh, truly a pleasure. Oh, the, the uh, pleasure—the pleasure is all mine. I look forward to this all year. We, we will continue Love to it. keep having you back on for for October, and you know, maybe we'll try to have you on another time of the year too. I don't maybe. know. Who knows? Yeah. If you if you end up doing that Valentine's Day episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not just telling you. I think there's something about. Like talk, talking to women about what is your favorite true crime thing and then just posing the question, like, why do you think this is popular amongst women and why? Just to, just to, just to hear what people have to say, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it would be interesting. Yeah. So don't, don't invite me for that one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just want to listen. I want to listen. Yeah. All right. Well, but, I'm sure Meg would come on for that because she loves that. Thank, yeah. thank you guys so much for having me. This is really fun. I, th- I think this is a really interesting topic to, to think about. And I appreciate the little journey down um, horrifying memory lane uh, that, that it took me. On. Great. Well, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. And we appreciate you coming back on. Uh, CJ, what do we have to plug here? You can follow us on all the things at Overtalking Pod. Call or text us at usacat1591. Email us at at gmail.com. Go to our website, overtalkingpod.party. You can type in the word Danny. Find all of his previous episodes. Hey. Definitely. 
Uh, oh no, they're here. It's <laughs> <laughs> the quick one. Uh, the overtalking overlords are in full Halloween attire, which is hard to distinguish from their normal uh, attire, except for, of course, the Michael Myers mask. Yes, I can see that. Uh, they're here to remind me, to remind you, if you like the show, please go on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and rate and special review. Reviews are to help people find this podcast and also be spending no money in advertising. So if you like to help us tell friends, spread the word, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and if you want to check out old Double Murder podcast episodes, I'm sure they're out there somewhere. As well. yeah, just yeah, Double Murder podcast that comes up. Do you, you want something funny? Uh, so the engineering manager I worked with when I was on the product team, he left. Our, the company that some of us, all of us work for <laughs> and went to a different company, this little like uh, e-commerce startup called Amazon. And uh, he's, ah, might have heard of he's working uh, on the Alexa team and he's bringing the Alexa podcast service to market. And so I was like, huh. Hey bro, you know, if somehow double murder just for like a day finds itself as like the number one recommended thing. I would not be upset about it. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. All right. Nice. We'll, we'll cross our fingers for you, but also maybe us. We'll yeah. <laughs> you guys can be right after. All right, cool. And as we always say, <laughs> happy Halloween. Bye. Happy Halloween! This spooky overtalking podcast episode was produced by Ken and CJ, edited by CJ. Special guest this week was Danny. Music by Justin Peters. Logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs.